I grew up in Oshkosh, Wisconsin as a lover of airplanes. And when it came to finishing high school, I needed something to do. Actually, I needed some way to pay for college. So I enlisted in the Air Force. It turned out I loved the Air Force and and wanted to uh, somehow figure out how to make it a career. So I got out after four years to finish up college. I had a, an offer to become a pilot, but at that same time, I received the call to ministry. And long story not so long, I ended up returning into the Air Force as a military chaplain, as an Air Force chaplain, and and spent 35 years as a chaplain. And I retired as the 19th chief of chaplains. So one of the stories I wanted that you, that you and I have talked about before that I really wanted to single out today was a story uh, about Pearl Harbor, about Hawaii, but it's also very much about being a parent of someone in the military. So could you share with a little bit about that story? It was January 13th of 2018, and uh, my son and his wife uh, were stationed in, uh, in at Hickam in Hawaii, but Nathan, our son, was a captain uh, in, the, in the Air Force, uh, serving as a maintenance officer, and and I get a call from Nathan. His phone conversation with me was uh, was rather brief and um, and rather to the point. And he said, "Dad, I I got to tell you, um, our texts are are blowing up, saying that North Korea has has launched a missile, and it's directed here at at Hickam." And um, from all we can tell, um, the missile is on its way probably five or six minutes out. And I wanted to call you and say I love you and wanted to let you know um, that, that, you know, we're, we're going to take shelter as best we can, uh, but I got to go. And then before he hung up, um, Rabbi, before he hung up, he, he said, but dad, the one thing that doesn't the thing I can't figure out is why the horns aren't blowing on on Hickam on the air Force, on the air on the air base and Navy base. And as soon as he said, he asked the question as to why the horns weren't blowing, the horns started sounding, and I could hear him in the background. And and he said, "Dad, I love you. Um, please tell mom, you know, I love her as well. I gotta go." And and I could hear his wife. Uh, Becky crying in the background, and and they went to the middle of their little base house there on Hickam, found a closet that was uh, uh, the most central place in the house, and grabbed their dog, and and they all um, settled in, and 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 again took cover. Thirty-eight minutes yesterday, people feared that there was a missile flying through the air and about to hit Hawaii, and it's because of this alert. And not long after, we found out that someone hit the wrong button or pushed the wrong sequence of um, of alert signals, and it was all false. It was all uh, for naught. It was, in some ways, one of the scariest moments of my my time as a parent. And, you know, we we have two children. One chose to join the military. Uh, but, um, you know, part of part of parenting is this whole sense of uh, of kind of instilling or hoping to instill the kind of uh, traits and, and character and quality in them that that helps them to make uh, courageous deci- decisions uh, and good and moral decisions. And and quite frankly, it involves an awful lot of letting go, you know, but as a parent, you know, you're, you're always concerned uh, about what your kids are up to and their safety. And but the fact is, as life is so uncertain and, and there is no guarantee for tomorrow for any of us, no matter what our occupation, lots of emotion, uh, but at the same time, uh, a real sense of pride. He wanted to make a difference and he wanted to serve his country and quite frankly, make the world a better place. And I'm I'm proud of him for that. I was deployed five times, and uh, several of which were into in hostile uh, regions. And um, you know, for me, being the one that leaves, being the one that deploys, being the one that goes and even faces danger. But I'm here to tell you, Rabbi, that my wife's job throughout all this was was far more difficult than mine was. You know, because of <clears throat> all the uncertainty that she had to deal with, and and um, and then our our uh, our young daughter, young son, explaining you know why why daddy's not home again tonight, and and as a as a parent of someone who's serving in the military, that's that's significant. But I I think this for me is a moment to give a shout out to the 
to those who stay back and to those who um to the spouses and the family members who who pay um every bit is high price for for service for dedicated service and in, in today's military but how as the person left behind parent or spouse or child mm -hmm. how do you get through those fears yeah for for my wife i mean she would say i think she would immediately say that it was the community that she had built um back home and the other uh mostly um you know wise spouses uh, mothers that she had a community with and they they supported one another and um and and of course our own family you know my parents her parents would come to visit and help out a little bit and um and you know but it was uh kind of creating those those essential kind of social connections prior to the, the to the to the deployment but i can tell you my wife would would certainly say it was it was her her good friends who also likely had young children uh commander spouses who 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 kind of leaned in and said you know what we're going to get through this together and um it was it was it was those social connections that were absolutely essential to uh to getting through this with any kind of uh uh sense of uh normality i guess uh, throughout how does faith fit into that picture for the spouses and kids left behind yeah well again for us the the faith component was always important my uh, my first deployment was desert storm and uh i remember kissing my wife goodbye she was three months pregnant and i knew then i wasn't sure if i was going to be back in time for me to be there for the birth but you know i left and and uh and quite frankly she uh, stayed connected to the chapel community that we we're obviously part of in fact it was a member of our chapel community who lived who worked in the uh in the ops group who um who was the one who was able to go through all the archaic communication lines to get a hold of me in my tent in afghanistan or not afghanistan but in saudi arabia uh, he literally found me in a tent in in saudi arabia um and was able to connect me through a cell phone not a cell phone but a satellite phone anyway as a member of our faith community that actually made that connection so that when Denise did have um give birth to our son um she was able to call me you know like within the hour and I remember her asking if she could name our son Nathan and of course Nathan is the one who's uh our Air Force captain now so I'm hearing two parts to this one part is the military family because they can relate if if you if you don't have a a military family they don't understand what you're going through they it's hard it's really hard they really can't relate to it they've got no point of reference they've never mm -hmm. experienced anything like that so they don't have a place and then having a faith group that is is strong in their faith to support what you're doing Mm -hmm. and what the family is do, you know is, is supporting you to do right that 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 faith group is also the support piece that the, the element that comes to it so for young couples for parents for kids any thoughts that you can share specifically to close up our discussion about you know how to hang in when you, when you're the one left behind yeah again i just go back to the importance of relationships and friendships and and um you know people you can call and in the middle of the night and say I'm scared and I just need someone to talk to and and that or to to um to just go and hang out with and um have you know share a babysitter and throw all the kids in a room together with a couple pizzas on the floor and then and let the the moms have some time together to tell stories and share their experiences and just feel feel as though they're not alone um because loneliness is um is is quite frankly deadly but the best preparation i can tell uh, or offer to anyone is to is to really work at those relationships and take risks and making friends and 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 inviting folks over and being together finding ways to connect and and finding ways to to build those relationships that will in fact uh, pay huge dividends uh, when you need them most. <laughs>